The Aldis Podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our ServiceNow series, where we interview the best and brightest of the industry to share their story, advice, and views on the exciting world of ServiceNow and digital transformation. You're listening to the Aldis Podcast ServiceNow series. Our guest today is Doug Rezebeck. Doug is the Director of ServiceNow Solutions at SoftHack Solutions. Doug, welcome to the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, we're delighted to have you back. So, Doug, for the benefit of of people listening who didn't catch the first episode, let's start with yourself, please, as we do with all of our guests. Could you remind the audience a little bit about your background in tech, uh, from where you got started, some of the roles you've held along the way, what's led you to where you are today? So I'm the, the the grumpy old man on the porch, right? I'm the gray-headed guy who's been doing this since probably before a lot of your listeners were even born. So I've been in the IT space uh, since 1989, been doing ITSM uh, work as far back as InfoMan on an IBM mainframe. Uh, that's, how, that's how long I've been kind of doing this. So spent a lot of time in that space, did a lot of process consulting in largely in the IT service management space, but not exclusively. And ultimately with the company I was with prior to SoftTAC, uh, we got in and started doing implementations. We had originally been just a process company. Hey, we define the process, we go through the races, the roles, the responsibilities, the the business triggers, all of that, and then would hand off those specs to someone else to actually configure whatever the platform was at the time, whether it was Peregrine or HP, uh, CA, you know, all of those platforms we we delved into. We made a strategic decision. Um, I guess it's probably back in the the early to mid 2000 teens, I guess you'd call it, um, to actually go into the implementation business. And so that's kind of where I got my start. I started in Fuji. So that's how far back I've been doing it. And um, I've also got a passion for organizational change management. So I'm that guy that that sits on the technology side, but also has a real passion for the human element. Thank you for that. Super helpful. And it sort of explains the natural uh, transition to an organization like SoftTAC Solutions. So before we jump into your your current role and responsibilities, let's set the stage. Who are SoftTAC Solutions, mission of the business, the, and the, talk a little bit about the, the vertical that you're supporting. I mean, the, the clue might be over your shoulder there, but, but let's <laughs> jump into it. Yeah, we are a woman-owned small business, and as you might gather from the name SoftTAC, uh, kind of born out of the special operations community uh, in the U.S. military. So we are not exclusively DOD partner, contractor, service provider per se, but it is certainly our sweet spot, and it's a passion for what we do. And, you know, you kind of mentioned the, the mission of the company. Well, the mission of the company is to support the mission. We have a passion for supporting the warfighter. We have a huge veteran community in within the company. I did not serve, unlike my uh, colleagues, a, a large chunk of the, my colleagues in the company. Um, but I have developed, having been exposed to that environment, the true passion for what those folks do and, and how they protect our freedom. So I've kind of gotten that organically and certainly working with some of the best professionals in the business um, it's it's really it, it's the core of how we go about things and how we think. It's also the reason that we invest so heavily mm-hmm. in hiring uh, veterans coming out yeah. who are separating from the military, which is a whole thread we can go down at whatever point we want to because it's a it's I'm an important sure we'll part of our culture. It. I'm sure we'll touch on it because I know in, in prior conversations it, it's certainly ingrained in the culture and DNA of SoftTAC, but. Let's start with your role. So, you know, you're director of, of ServiceNow Solutions. So uh, help us understand what, what's involved. Um, maybe give us some insight on the, the day-to-days of, of your responsibilities, how that connects with the broader team. Uh, and then we can talk about some of the, the, the solutions that you're actually solving for the end customers. In this case, people within the public sector. Yeah, so I I was hired and brought into the company as the the first ServiceNow practitioner on the the SoftTech 
team. So I was brought in to basically be that initial addition initial if i can spit that out resource and to build the practice so we've been doing that over the last uh, five years at this point in time and have gone from when i started uh, as a, a band of one up to uh, i think we're at 35 professionals now within our our service now team at the company so i've got overall accountability for the practice now uh, what was a, a a blessing to me was my boss having the foresight to know that hey, we need an operations manager in here to take off some of the things that that, you know, it's just that that was not the best use of my skills. So uh, Mike Martell, retired colonel, uh, uh, 06 from within the U.S. Army, was brought in and, and he's my work wife. So he and I drive the practice. So he's the, the director of service now operations. I'm the director of service now solutions. And between the two of us, um, we have accountability for the practice and drive where we're going. And, and ultimately, when it works, uh, it's because of the resources we've got on our team. If it doesn't work, it's either his fault or my fault. It's just kind of the way it comes down to any way you look at it. I like that self-accountability, but also acknowledgement of, of people's skills. I know you, you're saying some of that in jest, but having met you both and spoken to you both, it's quite complementary personality. So it works well more often than not. Um, I want to spend a bit of time talking about the the incredible demand for the ServiceNow platform that we're seeing in the public sector space, whether it be from uh, DOD, defense, or, or different uh, verticals, and how SoftHack is identifying opportunities. And ultimately, as much as you can share, maybe some of the, the exciting projects and, and recent wins that you're seeing. I know you can't disclose too much because a lot of them are subject to security clearance, which is part of the allure, but there's a lot going on in the space. So from where you sit, what have you noticed from your time joining to where you are today at SoftTact about the scale of the opportunity for ServiceNow? Well, the, the, the one thing that we have seen, and it's unlike when I was in the commercial space where we went and did a lot of implementations, you know, did the wrench turning, got the thing built, turned it over to the customer and went on to the next thing. We have been fortunate that in the, the space that we are in, our mode of operation and what our clients want us to do is really more build it for me and then I want you to sustain it and do the improvement. And what we found over time is every time we put out a new capability in front of the customer, we get two more enhancements requests for every one thing that we deploy. And so it's this, you know, uh, self, uh, you know, priming pump of requirements to go through and do things. So, you know, we've, we've ventured into areas that, that quite honestly, we didn't necessarily have the skills on staff at the time, but we either go train those skills up or we go hire and find them, sometimes a 1099, oftentimes a W-2 that we'll bring in. Um, but at the end of the day, we will go through and, and put out a new capability. So, you know, start an ITSM, do strategic portfolio management, venture into GRC and, and continue authorization and monitoring, um, and you know even venturing now into the HR space. So it, it, what's really good is that we've got a very wide portfolio of solutions now because our customers are constantly pulling us into new capabilities. And that's just in the realm of the things that ServiceNow gives us in terms of applications. The yeah. stuff that really gets me jazzed personally are the built for purpose applications that are explicitly mission focused. Those things are the ones I'm not gonna talk about, but they're the ones that really are intriguing because you, you, you're you taking a blank canvas and you get to paint the solution. Whereas, you know, ServiceNow gives us such a robust paint by numbers uh, for all of their applications, um, but they're leading you down the path. These other ones where the customer is leading us down the path, I, it, I just, I find them fun is the best way to put it. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that we can't give everyone listening to this an NDA to, to sign so we could disclose a bit more, but I think it's part of the the unique nature of what you're doing at SoftTact is, you know, the the bleeding edge impact of technology and, and the industry that it's impacting. You know, you're not just 
automating some back office process, this is ha this can have a significant impact on on real world stuff, which is very mm -hmm. exciting. Mm -hmm. Talking a little bit more then about the the, the ever growing group, you touched on it a little bit about bringing in expertise. I know you and I speak quite regularly now about Softax continued success and how that's impacting the growing team. Can you just give us a, a bit of a look behind the scenes of the broader ServiceNow group? from the the scale so as the various positions and, and types of projects that, that are going on at any one time and absolutely so one of the things that and it goes back to supporting the mission that we have a passion for is providing opportunities for veterans who are separating those who are coming out of the military that have a chance to go through a skill bridge program uh, uh hiring our heroes program one of these things that helps them find uh, the skills that they need to be able to to go from a military career to some civilian career. And so at the low end of our team, and I say low, that's probably not the right word for it, the entry level resources that we have, we are heavily invested in those resources. And we are constantly looking to find those folks and certainly would welcome, you know, any and all applicants that are are coming out of the military because it's been a huge success. I mean, over 75% of our service now team within the company served. So that is a, a foundational element. And the other thing, and we've actually, we're working on branding this, if you will, um, but it's our approach to an engagement or an implementation. And that is where we take the skilled service now practitioners, some of which serve, some of which like me don't serve, and marry that up with someone who's got a specific subject matter expertise in the client set that we're dealing with. And we have, it's been a niche for us, and it's been kind of a secret sauce to be able to have that where we have a retired lieutenant colonel or senior enlisted officer um, or, or even a retired colonel that is our engagement manager that knows the lingo, knows how to navigate the nuances of dealing with the Department of Defense. And that combination has really been just invaluable. Yeah, yeah, it has been invaluable to the point we've we've uh, sort of coined it what we call the gray wolf, which is the, the you know, we're kind of figuring out how to 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 put a marketing spin on what we do. The gray part uh, we will go ahead and defer as to where that came from. But the wolf really comes back to, to workflow, which is the core of what ServiceNow does, oversight, leadership, and focus. And those are the elements that when we have this combination of ServiceNow technicians and subject matter expertise to the environment, you know, if we're doing an engagement in Army Intel, if I have a choice, I want somebody who's retired Army Intel to be my face into that particular engagement. They've been and, on both sides of the fence and more than just having subject matter expertise in like a finance or a healthcare, this is people who it's their identity, it's their passion. So it goes well beyond subject matter expertise because the, the people that they're engaging with, they know the impact that the technology can have and that would what benefit it can have real time. Yeah. It, it, the other part of it is just being able to communicate. Uh, if you haven't been in the public sector and specifically the Department of Defense and what I will call affectionately and, and not trying to offend anybody, the alphabet soup of acronyms that exist in that environment. You can go Google it. Google, you know, U.S. military acronyms and you're going to get, you know, pages upon pages because there's just so many. And for those that are on the outside looking in, I. I'm, I've learned a lot, I've picked up a lot, um, but at the end of the day, I need somebody sitting there that I can rely on to translate for me when things get thrown out there. And honestly, yeah. I'm, I, you know, I'm trying not to I'm trying to look like I know what I'm talking about, but it's one of those fake it till you make it, and you kind of whisper to the side, "What was that acronym?" <laughs> um, but that that's a huge part of this approach that we've yeah. had. Uh, and it's been, a, a like I say, sort of a secret sauce for our success, if you will. Thinking about the people who are coming in, you you referenced like 75% of the current ServiceNow team have served. But one of the things you and I were speaking about previously, there's still a bottleneck in, in levels of seniority, which will get worked out over time because a lot mm -hmm. of the, the workforce are coming in at that, you know, junior to mid-level stage. For the the seniors and architects, these like expert level ICs, 
there's still a bottleneck, which does create an opportunity for people in other industries who want to step into a space where their skills are, you know, the demand is amplified and the, the opportunity and scale is just as big as any of the other industries. And that's where we're seeing a lot of people now start to realize within the ServiceNow community, hey, there's so much work here that we could be doing and have a real impact. And I know you and I talk about that as well. As somebody who's come from the commercial sector into public, what what are some of your key takeaways? What have you learned? And what would you tell somebody who's considering? Well, I want to follow on a little bit to that piece of taking those who are, are maybe a, a junior or mid developer and moving up. I happen to, because it's part of our partner requirements, I'm currently going through the Certified Technical Architect Program. Yeah. There's also the other expert program, which is the Certified Master Architect. And one thing that I would would impart or share with those listening is if you you know really want to make service now your long term career path, do some research on that and get it on your radar scope. There's requirements that that have to be there in terms of you know years on the platform, minimum credentials that you have to have, and it's an investment. The CTA right now is at seven thousand dollars. The CMA is seventeen thousand dollars, but Position yourself within your company to say, I want to be there. That's what I want to do because those are the folks that we need. That's that gap that you're talking about is that high end senior level resource or platform architect that can be the face to the customer, right? You need yeah. to have those folks that can sit there and speak passionately and and accurately about the value of the platform, the capabilities of the platform, how the platform will help bridge the gap between where an organization is today and, and where they want to go and the things that they want to do. And so uh, the expert programs within service now, I think, is a good place to kind of put your eye on and say, that's a path I want to look for, because to be honest with you, you get yourself a security clearance yeah. and and you get yourself a CTA or a CMA you will never be out of work. I completely there is agree. Just no I, can, question. I can echo that sentiment from speaking to dozens, if not hundreds of end users and partners alike. The demand for talent with certifications is just ever growing. One thing I want to add, Doug, because it's relevant to what you said, speak to your current employers. If they're a ServiceNow partner or they have a relationship, there are discounts on the cost of the certification. So I know as a ServiceNow partner ourselves, we can offer significant discounts to our employees who want to get the certifications. And that's not unique to us. That's unique to all partners. So it's out there and available. Um, I think that's a good segue into the next part of the conversation, which is really the, the most exciting part, which is what's next. You know, when you look at the near term roadmap for SoftHack, there's so much that we could talk about. but uh, focusing on the next 18 to 24 months, what are you excited about? What do you see that's possible in terms of upcoming projects, bids out there, existing work that, that you and the team are looking forward to tackle? Yeah, we have got a lot of, and it's this organic expansion. You know, keep in mind, we, we've got a heavy presence, presence in Big Army. Yeah. And so we build one thing and now another you know, subordinate command says, hey, I want to hop on that train and, and take advantage of that, or here's yeah. my problem set. And so right now we are in this point where uh, our biggest challenge right now, well, there's two. One is just dealing with government contracting. That in the commercial world, somebody cuts you a PO, you start on Monday, you're ready to go. Government contracting does not work that way. Um, and that is is something that is a, a never ending challenge for us is getting a piece of work onto a contract that we can uh, kind of move out with. The other part of that is the, the, the RMF package and getting through an authority to operate for a system that's on a DOD network. That is a an ongoing challenge because it is a lot, a lot of work to go through and do that. But as we are, you know, those two things aside, the reality is our uh, opportunity just within our existing customers, not even going out into other things, which I'll touch on just briefly in a second, um, is I won't call it limitless, but it feels that way today, to yeah. be honest with you. And and I think that that so that's something that is clearly exciting because it's just solving more problems that need to be solved. And at our core, that's what our company is. We're problem solvers. 
And I would, I think I'll get kicked out of the ServiceNow Partner Program if I don't mention Gen AI, okay? So that is something that's coming. It's got a place. I, you know, we're all kind of a, to a point feeling our way in the dark there. Um, but I do think it's something that that is going to have a long-term play in what we're doing with ServiceNow. Clearly, they are investing so much in that space um, and finding the right time and the right opportunities to take advantage of it, I think is going to be something that will be, you know, over that 12 to 24 month time frame, a, a real game changer in the, the market space. For sure. Well, look, anyone listening to this, it, we, we can safely assume is, is somewhat familiar with the ServiceNow ecosystem. Therefore, it would be impossible not to be aware of the, the Gen AI uh, drum that's being beaten. And, you know, AI has been banded about for a number of years now, but the reality is the companies need robust infrastructure to actually get some type of benefit from that. And it feels like ServiceNow has really found uh, its calling there. Um, and then when you look at the public sector, particularly defense and federal, you know, there might be lots of different AI platforms out there, but not not many of them get the seal of approval at the federal government level. And once one does, then it's broadly adopted, which is why we're seeing service now have such tremendous uh, growth within the public sector space. Um, now, until these veterans come through from their junior mid and get to the senior IC level, we're dealing with a shortage of talent, which is one of the biggest bottlenecks to implementation. So in many cases, when we're targeting these senior developers and architects who have clearance, who are already somewhat familiar with the DOD space, we're, we're trying to attract talent from existing projects elsewhere. So that's difficult. That's a constant challenge that you and I talk about regularly. When you're speaking to talented senior people within the service now, space who are also already in the public sector, who have their secret clearance, what is it that you tell them? Or well, what can you tell them without signing NDAs that gets them excited enough to join SoftHack over some of the other great companies also out there? Because not all environments are the same. Um, you and I talk about that. So I, I definitely want to finish on, on that point for you. I guess the, the the main thing there is because of our the way we're navigating the the, the DOD space. Uh, today may look one way, tomorrow's going to look totally different. We are not a hey, we do GRC or we're just ITSM. Our customers are dragging us um, willingly. Let's be clear, <laughs> dragging us willingly into new solution sets and new applications. And so for us. You know, I can if I'm out there trying to, to bring people in, I can give you variety, right? I can give you the opportunity to learn new things and to do new things because every time we get the, the next performance work statement or, or statement of work that comes across, there's something new in it. There's some new aspect that we're going down. And so that, that's a big part of, of what we're trying to do. And and now we're trying to actually, you know, our, our sort of flagship, and we talked about in this, this in the initial podcast, our, our flagship implementation, if you will, is armymaintenance.com. So all in Army installations worldwide, the maintenance goes through a, the ServiceNow platform, but we're trying to take that into anybody with a campus. It's not ARMA, the Army maintenance application, it's campus maintenance operations, whether it's a university, a corporate campus um, and and you know any environment like that. So that's a big part of what we've got that that we're trying to leverage the successes and where you you know where they are somewhat unique. Create a value proposition that says, "Hey, SoftTac is the go that solution," and that's yeah. absolutely one of them that that we see as a as a next you know twelve to twenty four month expansion for us as we grow. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, final question for me then, Doug, just to give the audience a sense of where where the growth is is going to take us. You know, if we have you back on the show in in twelve to eighteen months from now, how many more people will you have, or do you hope to have in the service now group? And I know some of that is subject to what what new projects you get dragged yeah. into willingly and, and what new customers you bring on. But just, to, you know, even if you look at the next six months as an indicator, how many more people will you guys need to continue to serve the ever-growing demand? Between now and this time next year, I could absolutely see our service now practice doubling. 
It's probably a little tough for us to do that between now and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But if we were to add, you know, uh, 50 percent to what we've got right now, you know, yeah. kind of start pushing that 50 uh, employee mark within our service now practice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that right now on the pace that we are, that's absolutely reasonable uh, between now and the end of the year. Yeah, and that's massive. And that's just an indicator from what you can see right now without mm -hmm. any further implementations. Yep. Doug. Thank you so much for doing this. I know we've been talking about getting you back on the show for a while now, so it didn't disappoint. I really appreciate you going back over your own career history, some incredible insight into the work you're doing at SoftTech. And my my only message would be for people who are interested in this space is like the, if if you're interested in what you've heard right now, you, you could learn a hell of a lot more by by talking to Doug and team. So yeah. we wish you, the team, and everyone at SoftTech the very best of luck in the months and year ahead and we look forward to having you back on the show again in the near future i would i'll jump on it every, every chance you give me so i do appreciate it and i thank you very much thanks for listening to this episode of the oldest podcast if you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to subscribe rate and review we are available on apple podcasts spotify and any android podcast of choice you can also head over to our website, www.allthis.com to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.